Hello YouTube, my name is Jeremy Vance, this is Dota2, and this is an introduction to Brewmaster. Brewmaster is a strength initiator hero who generally is played on the solo mid-roll. He has a sort of um, semi-carry role as well, but generally his primary role within a team is always to be as an initiator. In this game you're going to see absolutely how that works, and just how you play him in the mid-roll. He's pretty damn tanky in the mid-roll, but generally you do not want to take too much harass. And as such, he doesn't farm very much uh, with his right clicks. You often farm using Thunderclap. You can also farm small camp and other jungle camps and stuff in between times. But either way, um, I can't remember what skill bracket this game was played in, but it's probably high given... Um, just sort of the, the the quality of play overall and you're gonna see this is a fairly long game there'll be a few bits where I you know speed things up and slow things down and stuff but mostly this is gonna be about uh, me on a solo mid position as a brewmaster skills to start off with you have thunderclap there's an AoE nuke and slow around you um, the nuke goes from 100 to 300 so fairly standard stuff it's only on a 12 second cooldown it also has a movement slow of 25 scaling to 55% and the same goes for its attack slow uh, on units that are affected by this and it lasts 4.25 seconds so it lasts a fairly long time uh, which makes it very very good sort of throughout the game now you can see here I'm going for first blood with my allies on the mid lane here I'm just gonna wait until the sort of best opportunity for me you can see I'm just sort of waiting to see what's gonna happen Okay, this is my player perspective, sorry. I think that I was on Marana's player perspective then. Either way, she throws off an arrow that does hit. You can see I'm immediately going to go up for a thunderclap and start right-clicking. I'm going to get in his way as well. And I'm just going to continue right-clicking this. I know my allies are here, so I know I can manage to take the damage from that. And that will give me a really easy bottle. That was a really good arrow from the Marana. The uh, gyrocopter very obviously wasn't uh, expecting it to happen. And, uh, yeah. I did actually lose a, a creep of XP then, which wasn't fantastic. Either way, uh, my last hitting wasn't great this game, really. I'm going to be trying to see if there were runes or anything, but it looks like the Marana picked it up. And I do already have my bottle sent towards me. This is pretty much the ideal start you can have on a Brewmaster, but, you know. Th things don't go fantastically well uh, mid. Gyrocopt is a pretty strong mid versus a Brewmaster. You can't man fight him very much. Even if you Thunderclap, he's still going to use Rocket Barrage. He might attack slower, but he's going to do a lot more damage to you. So this isn't exactly a favorable matchup for a Brewmaster, but you could do some stuff to mitigate this. Second skill that I want to talk about, and uh, one of the most amazing skills in the game as far as I'm concerned, is Drunken Brawler. This gives you a dodge and a crit chance. The both of these scale from 10 to 25 percent and the crit chance is only 200 percent so it's not a particularly strong carry one which is why he's only really a semi carry you don't really build damage items on him and um, his damage isn't really the most important point the most important point is the amount of control that you put out on a team fight kind of similar to a, a jakiro and you can see i'm not actually farming that well in the mid here like i said i wasn't playing particularly well this game either way you can see again i've pushed up the creep wave i'm going to use up my bottle and go for this invis rune um this would be really nice just in general for me i'm also going to finish up a magic wand just because it's a gyrocopter so i'm a little bit worried about survivability and uh having enough sort of mana and stuff as well is also quite crucial on brewmaster and you quite commonly don't quite have enough mana so I'm going to be maxing out Thunderclap because that's pretty much your bread and butter of Brewmaster. It's it's definitely the strongest part of the uh, the hero other than the ultimate, but it's also extremely um, difficult to to use as commonly as you'd like to because Brewmaster has some serious mana issues uh, throughout the game. You can see again, I'm not getting all of these last hits and anything, and I'm not really concentrating about that. I mostly just want to see if I can give this gyrocopter a hard time in the middle lane he actually started out see uh, out uh, xp me at one point pretty harshly you can see my my cs is not very good this game but the gyrocopter is uh, doing a fair bit better than me actually so you know that's a mistake for me this game if there's one part of the game that i would say i did the weakest in it's this stage of the game 
I missed a fair number of last hits. I didn't do as well as I can in the lane. I'd not really played up this matchup before, uh, Gyrocopter versus Brewmaster. I knew Gyrocopter should probably have some advantages, and I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I was kind of trying to think a lot. I was also talking to Slayer, because I think I was playing... Yeah, Slayer is actually playing the... No, Slayer's not playing the Anti-Mage. Alright, okay. No, I don't know any of these people. I think I was talking to them in-game then. But um, either way, you can see the Rubik also stacked this camp for me here. Again, I'm getting a lot of assistance mid, and this is really, really useful for me. So I'm going to walk in, use a Thunderclap, do damage to pretty much all these groups here, and then just walk back to the mid lane, because I want to make sure I get all the XP from here. Next time Thunderclap is off cooldown and the, all the creeps in the mid lane are gone and there isn't a rune, I will go and basically do the same thing. But you can see, again, I'm just using Thunderclap pretty liberally here and uh, took a lot of damage there. Had to use up a magic wand charge as well as a bottle charge, so not exactly ideal. But items that I want to be going for, generally, like I said before, Brewmaster is a great initiator. You want to be getting uh, Arcane Boots because he does have mana issues and you want to always ensure that you can get your spells off because your spells are absolutely brilliant. Uh, a 55% movement and attack speed slow, if you can get it off on multiple people, is absolutely fantastic. Um, Brewmaster is very survivable, you don't need much in the way of survivability items. Some HP does you very, very well because um, obviously your Drunker Brawler sort of scales with this. I did not know they had a uh, Walking Courier. If I'd have seen that Walking Courier then guys, I would totally have died for that. Even if I may have died, I think that would probably have been worth it. I don't think I would have died as well because I had the Haste Rune. But uh, either way, I did not know they still had a Walking Courier at this point. So. That's uh, a little key moment that I couldn't see there, but that you can see is a pretty important point. So, as far as CS goes, you know, things are pretty much even. Um, the Gyrocopter is out CSing me slightly, but I've had full room control, as well as the First Blood. So I'm probably a little bit richer than him. As well as this, it's a lot easier for me to harass him. Well, I wouldn't say it's a lot easier for me to harass him. We both have very equal levels of harass, but I can take harass a little bit better than he can. So, I picked up level 6 here. And I said, well, I'm, I've killed all the creeps in the lane again, so I may as well finish off this stack here. That's a nice chunk of money there. It's not a huge amount, but definitely a nice chunk to add to me. I want to get my arcane boots as fast as possible. Useful item is, as always, drums. Great item on every hero. Drums is probably still slightly, <laughs> slightly broken item as far as just how many heroes might want a, a set of drums. So you can see there, I don't have particularly fantastic attack speed. That's one thing that you do want to try and get up later on on Brewmaster, generally. I don't concentrate on it at all, though, this game. Um, just because of the, sort of, you know, the way this game ends up going uh, in the late game. And the, uh, the amount of farm I get um, sort of later on, and the way the fights go. But either way, I've picked up my ultimate now. For those who don't know, uh, Brewmaster's ultimate is one of the scariest in the game. It basically... Brewmaster disappears from the map, technically, and splits into three aspects, the Earth, the Fire, and the Wind Panda. The Earth Panda is um, more survivable than the others, has a lot of HP, and does not do a great amount of damage, but has a stun. He is also magic immune. The Fire Panda it does a lot of damage. He can also crit, based on Drunken Brawler, and I believe he has a... Uh, what is similar to Radiance or attached to him. Here I made a misclick mistake and uh, ended up getting attacked by the tower. That could have very easily been a second kill on the gyrocopter then if I, ha if I hadn't have misclicked. I misclicked basically up here when I wanted to sort of go through the river and then surprise him forwards because I had the uh, the invis rune on. So you can see I now have my arcane boots. This pretty much means I can spam my, uh, drunk my thunderclap pretty much continuously. If the gyrocopter ever comes into the area as well I can use it to harass and get CS, so that's pretty much the idea of, uh, of using Thunderclap like this in the mid lane. You've got to make sure that you get room control from it though, so don't, uh, so, you, so basically the most opportune time is to unit, use it at the sort of this sort of time on this creep wave here, because if I wipe out this creep wave very very fast, I can then immediately go to the rune. This guy has to stay here or be followed by a much larger creep wave. I have no idea why this guy is saying report uh, and fast finish and stuff, they, I mean like the game's not going fantastically for them, but the game's not going awful for them as well. So you can see here, I worked off that creep wave, I'm going to bottle up and then go straight for the haste rune bot. I want this really badly. Haste rune is an exceptional rune on, Bruce Mas on Brewmaster. So 
a lot of people now would say go straight blink dagger i kind of agree with them if you're in a, a situation where you really need it we've had a very stable laning presence though and i want to keep things as stable as possible so i'm actually going to rush up a drum uh, this will give me a lot of stats uh, a lot of uh, a nice aura as well and one thing that I didn't mention is that the Primal Split aura works on the Earth Panda. I f didn't finish talking about Primal Split as well. There's also a Wind Panda who can lift, uh, basically use Yule Scepter on an enemy, as well as then dispel this. He can also Wind Walk, uh, which makes him go a lot faster. So here I TP to the top lane, and I'm going to immediately use my Haste Rune. You see I timed this so when the Creep Wave was pushed out, this means that I can't be seen when I'm here. So the enemy team do not know I'm here. And I'm basically, I was a little bit worried that there was someone behind this guy right now. But the longer this goes on, the more and more I'm thinking it's not. So I'm going to go in with my Thunderclap. I'm going to go straight under the tower with him. He does get hit by an arrow as well. It was pretty uh, expertly placed. And then I'm just going to get myself out of there. I was a little inefficient with the way I got that kill, actually. I was, uh, I was a little bit disappointed with myself a few times in this game. But overall, things go, you know, fairly well. And I am going to get hit by the rocket, but you know, it's it's not maxed out. I believe it's just on uh, yeah, it's just on one level. This is pretty much the standard gyrocopter build. You don't need this many levels of rocket barrage most of the time, uh, and he didn't use it enough for it to be worth it against me. But yeah, it's pretty much standard stuff. So you can see how useful having a TP scroll is. Uh, I was immediately able to pick up the haste TP to a lane where they didn't know I was. I was missing for a very short time between the time that he died and between the time. Uh, that I that they probably actually called missing in game. So double damage rune bot again. This is an opportunity just to refill my bottle, keep myself up at full strength all the time, and is also an opportunity for a kill. I've now picked up my third skill as well. This is drunken haze. This is a single target ability on a pretty damn long range. Really good for chasing and such. And um, probably one of brewmaster's weaker skills. Very very useful to sort of support your team in a team fight or something but you know not a huge effectiveness kill uh, skill compared to say thunderclap or the others and basically you use it on people it slows them from 14 to 26 percent the last eight seconds which is a pretty damn long time and it also puts a mischance on them from 45 to 75 percent and i don't believe an mkb will actually solve this so you can see here i saw that my teammates were in a bit of a bind here i'm going to use my drunken brawl on the most dangerous right clicker they have which is the huskar we are going to kill off him Things are looking a little bit bad here, but I'm going to retreat off. We did lose our anti-mage, but it's still quite bad. I'm going to be hit by this stun here, which makes things a little bit dangerous. And I'm very worried about this guy, uh, this flazy Rubik here. So I want to back off, but as well as that, I kind of don't. He did manage to steal, I believe, Brewmaster's ulti. I'm going to throw down my um, slow on him to try and stop him being able to do the damage, but he dies to the gyrocopter, who uh, I sort of had forgotten was here and uh, there's no chance for us to get that guy so sadly we don't get the gyrocopter we do lose the rubik but ultimately a fairly good phrase for us especially because we got the uh, the huskar who is quite worrying um as a hero in the more recent patch huskar has changed from a hero that basically sucked to a hero that is really really strong so you can see here i'm going to clap on this guy turn on my ultimate and just very, very easily got the kill. I basically baited that one out. I wanted to purposely get this. You can see this is how the um, the pandas look, the panda splits look. Uh, you're not allowed to call them pandas because of Blizzard, but uh, that's what they are. You can see at level 1, it doesn't last particularly... Actually, no, it was level 2, so it doesn't even last particularly long at level 2. When you come back, the pandas will all... or the the Sorry. The elemental sp spirits, or whatever you want to call them... Um, will all disappear and you'll reappear where the earth panda is if the earth panda is dead you will reappear where the um, the wind panda is and if all three die brewmaster dies anyway and that might sound you know oh well you should kill the pandas then there's a lot uh, <laughs> there's three of them and they have a ton of hp and um the fire panda also gets drunken brawler passive that's you know you're pretty damn survival so here i picked up my drum of endurance it's 12 minutes in, I could have gone for my Blink Dagger and still probably almost had it by now. I would get it around 13 minutes in. But this just gives me that le extra level of stats, which versus a hero like Huskar, Elder Titan, Pudge and Gyrocopter, who all want to get into the fight, I was, I was more comfortable with the idea of getting survivability, given I'm likely to get close to them anyway. So you can see here, the, um, the Pugnas play defensively. As soon as the Creep Wave comes in, I'm just going to run around. 
you can see the uh, Rubik's with me. We're just going to kill the ward because we don't want to take any excess damage, and then we're going to very, very easily pick up that kill. Murana did uh, a great job throwing the arrow along with the uh, the Rubik following me in there. He 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 knew what the game plan was, which is very, very nice. I mean. This is the advantage of playing in a higher skill bracket. I know a lot of people complain about uh, the skill brackets they play in, and um, I, I can't, you know, I can't deny. Sometimes I play with horrible, horrible people as well. Not just as far as their uh, play, but also as far as just, you know, some people in the Dota community are surprise, surprise assholes. Um, one thing I'd like to talk about is you'll notice in my skill build I have four points in Thunderclap, one in Drunken Haze, two in Drunken Brawler. I don't want tons in Drunken Brawler because uh, it's, you know, I'm not getting any damage items on Brewmaster, I'm getting just pure utility for the moment, and two in Primal Split. So you'll notice that's one, two, three, I'm now on level 12, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I do have two levels of stats. This is pretty standard on Brewmaster. As a mid, you'll want one level of the passive early, but you'll still want to try and get two levels of stats around. Even with Arcane Boots, a Bottle, and a, a Drum of Endurance, you'll still be very, very wary. So you can see here, I was a little bit worried. I probably should have taken this fight. My team were quite critical. Um, I do have my Brewmaster Ultimate, so... It's very possible that I could have taken this fight already, but uh, I decided not to until afterwards. I decided to follow up and then use my ultimate at this point. You can see my micro with the pandas. Again, it's fucking terrible. Um, I'm embarrassed by how bad my panda micro is. Each of them has you know, multiple abilities. I should be using all of them. I'm not, and again, that's another thing that I need to work on. But generally, this is more about sort of positioning and build and such, and I'm going to get killed off here, there's no way. Even if I'd used my magic wand, I was a thousand percent dead there. Um, you know, kind of a sad moment, but uh, there's my first death. I've gone 4-1 and 2 so far. That's a pretty standard mid-solo, um, you know, what you should expect to do if you're on a mid-solo position. You know, I've been involved in a fair number of our kills. There's been a lot of kills this game in general anyway. I'm at the top of the last hits and denies, so that's always a strong thing for me. Although, remember, a fair number of those are jungle creeps. There's like nine or more. Probably somewhere approaching 15, actually. Somewhere between 12 and 15 uh, of the creeps that I've killed are actually jungle creeps. So I'm not actually the highest as far as um, net worth, I doubt. Uh, if I am, that'll be kind of embarrassing. How the fuck did I bring that up? Alright, I brought that up in game, apparently. Uh, okay, apparently I am the highest in net worth. Either way, I'm going to be rushing up my Blink Dagger now. This will just allow me to initiate better. The basic idea of initiation is force the enemy to fight you, or force them back from a position where you want to take control. So, to jump in with Blink Dagger, use Thunderclap, and then use my ultimate, is extremely strong. What that means, basically, is that I can jump into all of them, Say if they're all grouped up, I can slow all of them, slow all their attack speeds, so the fight is going to be instantly in our favour, and that was a really good hook by the punch. That was really smart team play there, which was funny because they've been complaining about each other. Um, and then, you know, he goes and saves his teammate like that. So, And then if I use Primal Split, I can stun one, do loads of damage, as well as pseudo-stun another using uh, the Yule Scepter from the third panda... Uh, from the... Uh, the the wind panda that's the one the underrated panda the wind panda's great and all guys but um he's certainly not the most important one honestly a lot of what brewmaster does with his ultimate is mostly fear factor he's a very very scary hero and you can see here this was kind of a bad fight for us we lost our witch doctor they lost their pudge they're both in this game uh, support heroes neither of them are uh, being core heroes I'm going to throw that on the gyrocopter just because I'm a little bit worried about it. He might turn around and do some more damage. And again, we're throwing ourselves in. I do use my ultimate. Sadly, I was pushed back a little bit far. Uh, and I'm going to... Am I going to... Alright, I think I had control of the wrong panda here because I should be throwing a stun on this guy. Alright, yeah, I do throw a stun on this guy. Sadly, the Pugna Ward is actually going to kill off the... Uh, okay, but, you know, what can you do? And uh, so you can see there, if I would have been much better with my pandas, I would have probably completely won that team fight. There's no way the pud should ever have got away. You can see when that guy used the ultimate on him, I, it was a good move of me to actually use uh, Drunken Brawler, uh, not Drunken Brawler, Drunken Haze. It slows him down a little bit, means that he takes a little bit more damage. And again, this was not well played for me in this team fight. 
What is well played though is my use of Thunderclap and actually when to use my Primal Split. You can see every time I use my Primal Split, uh, I'm using it from the very forefront of the fight. You want to make sure that you're absolutely right in the enemy team when you use it if you can, as well as using it, um, you know, defensively. Generally, Brewmaster is not a hero that wants to die very much and shouldn't die very much. He's practically, he's pretty much supposed to be practically invincible um, as far as, you know, how often you should die. If you play things absolutely perfectly, you should be able to blink in, Thunderclap, and Primal Split. And then when you come back out, there should be a short enough time for you to actually blink out as well. So it's very, very uh, possible to be almost completely invincible. Very, very elusive, very hard to hit, not just through passive, but also through the fact that you're using a blink dagger. I'm a little bit scared of that Elder Titan then. If that Rubik had got caught, that would be bad. That, on the other hand, is not quite worse, actually. Anti-Mage is playing a little bit far up here. He should probably be split pushing and farming. Um, his farm is going to be a little slow from this, but ultimately he ends up doing pretty damn well in the, uh, the end of the game. Either way, at this stage, you know, I'm moving less and less towards a semi-carry roll, even at 20 minutes. Brewmaster's damage output is not particularly impressive. You can see I have no damage items, but these are really my core items. I need the bottle as well as the arcane boots to keep my HP and my uh, mana up. It's very important to make sure that you always have enough mana to blink, thunder, clap, and split. If you don't have enough mana to do that, then you should just be blink and splitting. If you don't have enough mana to do that, you should go back to base, or you should bottle up or something, or get yourself a rune, because you really don't want to be in that position. That was, uh, I laughed about that one, I think it said in the team chat, like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and uh, we almost got caught by that thing, because I was talking in team chat, like I said, and I'm thinking about initiating then, but we didn't have a creep wave, and I wasn't sure whether my team could follow up. One of them was a little bit uh, low on health. So again, making sure that my bottle's completely used before I actually pick up a rune. So I'm going to definitely initiate on this one. Possibly a waste of my double damage rune, I could have done this without it. But uh, I do get the double damage on the Earth Panda. You can see I'm continuing to chase with this. I'm also trying to find this bloody guy here. I hate this guy, it's so annoying. Either way, continue to go on in the middle of the fight. But as soon as I come out, I'm going to again Thunderclap. As soon as this guy goes on me, I use my Drunken Haze and he's not able to do the damage and we win the fight pretty handily. So that's basically the strengths of Brewmaster right there, you could really see it. I was practically invincible during the course of a long duration fight in which I dived the tier 2 almost and basically caused the kill on 2-3 to three heroes. I took a third of my health. And again I'm diving further on the guy, slowing down him so that the Marana arrow was able to hit and we easily pick up the kill as well. Anti-Mage takes the kill, which is a good thing. We want him to kill Steel. He's our hard carry. We absolutely need him um, to get a lot of kills and such because he's not been farming particularly great this game. You can see he's not up to his Battle Fury yet, and uh, he's got the money for it now, but that's 21 minutes of Battle Fury, so that is late. Even for a pub game, um, you should aim to get a Battle Fury at you know, an earlier stage. So here, I sold my bottle and picked up a point booster. Again, this is just more effective HP and mana. This also leads into my next item, which is the first luxury item on Brewmaster, I suggest, and it is an Aghanim Scepter. If you thought Primal Split was hard to deal with before, wait until they all do more damage, have more health, and last a lot longer. Primal Split with a Aghanim Scepter is absolutely awesome spell. It's definitely uh, one of the best and uh, the most powerful upgrades in the game and I definitely say it's very very core. Cool. Remember guys, Brewmaster despite having um, a pretty, uh, despite having a crit, it's a pretty poor one and he's so much more effective as a, a, a utility damage dealer using his ultimate. He's so much more effective as, a, as an initiator than he is as a carry. I know a lot of people want to try and play him as a carry like uh, phase boots and treads and such are quite common on him. I think the treads thing is, uh, is kind of okay but the whole phase boots um, thing really not uh, advised from me guys. So I've also picked up my Ogre Club here, this is going to put me over the 2k HP mark. I already have 9 armor so I'm sitting at 37% uh, physical resistance. This basically makes me almost invincible this game. Their lineup simply doesn't have enough damage yet, you can see they're not doing very much damage, they've not been farming very well, the only one who's going to do a lot of damage in these fights is Huskar. 
and do we do have to be careful of him, but it's also my job to deal with him. If I use Drunken Haze on Huskar, he's pretty much neutered. Uh, his ability in fights is, is pretty shit after that point. Now here, I should really, all in all honesty, sell my magic wand and buy TP scrolls. If I want to be able to do anything other than constantly push and fight with my team, I need to have TP scrolls on me. And even if I do that, I should have TP scrolls on me in case they split push and we have to go back and defend. If they do split push, they should do badly because their lineup isn't built for it. But it's, you know, it's perfectly possible that they can try and do stuff like that. And uh, I think it comes back to bite me uh, later, but I can't really remember. Either way, good thing for us, we've taken all their tier 1 towers here. This is really, really good for an anti-mage. Basically, once you've taken a tier 1 tower, it gives an anti-mage more room to split push. If you take a tier 2 tower, now you can pressure Rax if you need to. So it's very, very strong. And at this point, I could tell that we were very strong. I saw one of them in the, uh, the mid lane there. Uh, saw another now. And I said, you know what, may as well farm their jungle. We have a ward in their jungle as well. If any of them come through, we'll see them in time. And hopefully, I'll be able to initiate on them and start a fight. I think I said at this point that we should go on the gyrocopter, but then I saw their team coming in, so things are looking a little bit scary. And I'm going to immediately blink out. The Witch Doctor's under the cover of an invis rune here, so if he wants to initiate, he can try to do so. An arrow goes in there, they all start to clump up. He's going to initiate first. They're going to hold in position, I'm going to wait. I do get hit by the... Um, by... oh my god, I forgot the name of it. I get hit by several spells there. I've gone invis. I'm waiting for a moment to initiate. I decide to go on the Huskar because he's the most dangerous target. I'm dragging them all towards me and I'm going to immediately use my ultimate once they've all grouped up. This is a really good fight for us now. We're going to keep on fighting. I should probably be focusing the Huskar or at least focusing a stun on him. But I've just noticed I've lost both of my other pandas so things are getting really scary. And because of this fight, because I wasn't able to get Thunderclap off on everyone, because I didn't use my Blink Dagger, I got hit beforehand. I'm actually not going to win this fight, despite the fact that it looked really good for, for us. I really needed to be able to get my uh, Thunderclap off on everyone. And you can see the Gyrocopter now picks up a Rampage, and he's way richer than when he started off. He started off this fight with a Shadow Blade, he now has 2.1k gold, and things are back in the ballpark for them. Before that fight, if we'd have done everything how we should have, they would, could never win the game. Now we made a mistake, my initiation wasn't good enough, I should have been in a, a better position to initiate, I was basically, I never got a chance to use Thunderclap, and w if I don't use Thunderclap on multiple heroes, it, it really isn't quite as good. The idea of Brewmaster, like I said before, is to jump in, Thunderclap, survive long enough to do a little bit of damage if you want to, you should try putting Drunken Haze on the scariest damage dealer, which at the moment is now Brewmaster and the Gyrocopter, and then you should use your ultimate try and survive as long, try and control the team fight, try and really put the fear into them, because that's what Brewmaster's ultimate really does. It, I mean, it forms three panda aspects. The problem I had is that my panda aspects were killed off, because I initiated without my team uh, being able to actually fight. It was either too early or too late. I couldn't really tell from the angle then, but I think it might have actually been too late in initiation. If I had managed to jump in where, uh, much, much earlier, when the Elder Titan was trying to use his stomp, and he did stomp me, if I'd have jumped on him and initiated then, I think the fight would have gone a lot better for us. Either way, you know, um, they are back on the board, but we're still doing okay. The uh, Anti-Mage is farming uh, okay now. He's got it up to his Yasha 26 minutes in. That's not bad, honestly. That's okay. And uh, I'm only 1,900 gold now from... Uh, from my Aghanim Scepter, and if I get an Aghanim Scepter this game, they should really be scared. That guy tries to hook me there, but I saw it coming and I was already out there, so... In the meantime, I may as well uh, pick off some Ancients here. Like I said, Brewmaster doesn't do fantastic DPS, but at this point I do okay DPS, and enough to certainly try and jungle using right clicks and stuff. Thunderclap doesn't work on these guys, these guys are magic immune, so... Uh, I just have to right click the shit out of them. You can see my crits don't hit very hard at all, and my attack speed is also kind of slow. Also, my cosmetic item came off. What the hell? That's a mythical flail. That shit can't turn off. I'm kind of upset now. I want my mythical flail, man. It looks cool as hell. It's like a big bell or something. I thought they had a, a, uh, a ward here because we were going into their jungle and they immediately backed off. That was just good uh, planning from them, and it was just good game sense from them. They just saw us off the map for too long and decided that we were probably trying to fight. As well as that, Brewmaster ult is back up. 
At this point, I'm almost maxing out my uh, Drunken Haze. This will end up being really, really strong now. It goes all the way up to 75% mischance. Blasting 8 seconds, if you can put that on a carry, honestly, it's really, really strong. It's what actually made at one point Brewmaster as a support hero was kind of semi-popular in the professional scene. Purely for that, you could just like throw Drunken Haze on a really fat gyrocopter, and it was like, well, now you can't hit us, friend. So... Again, we're just trying to keep as much map control as we can now. I'm just trying to farm up their woods a little bit. This is a little bit dangerous, but we do have map vision above me, and if I'm fast enough on my fingers, I should be able to just blink out of there. And you can see they're actually a lot more scared than we are. Um, most of their team is sitting around the tier 2 uh, tower, and near the Roshan pit, which is sort of their area of the map. We have one guy up in mid, one guy up down uh, here, uh, two people in the... Uh, our jungle, or the edges of our jungle, and one all the way up on the top side of the map farming. This is actually a bad move from me now. I should be, uh, I should have TP scrolls. Again, I said I didn't have before. This is a bad mistake. I should have gone back to the secret shop, or the side shop here, sold my wand, and bought um, a magic wand. My team is now going to get initiated on, and this is going to be a really bad t fight for my team. The Witch Doctor's ultimate is doing a lot of work in this team fight, but you can see they just haven't done enough damage to them. And by the time I get here, it's almost not worth initiating anymore. My team has lost two people, two fairly big damage dealers, not so much the Rubik, but he can steal spells, and that in itself is a big damage deal. And now we just have to retreat off, and we might even lose a tier 2 tower from this. So this is a, a bad move, and uh, this is just them getting uh, stronger and stronger at this point. And their 5-man really does is strong, actually, and it really comes online at this point. It's very hard to fight into an Elder Titan and a Pugna. You can see that guy just throws off an arrow just to try and cover us, almost. And the Entermage needs to be really careful here. He shouldn't be that far up. So you can see I use my uh, Drunken Haze on him, so he does no damage to me. They do manage to hook me, though. I'm going to immediately ultimate because I was extremely low health. I'm going to focus down on the Huskar. That's really the target we should be going on. The Anti-Mage is going to start going on him as well. I'm getting worried about the timing though. I have to make sure that I uh, get myself out of there in time. Otherwise things are going to be really dangerous. What I need to be able to do is know exactly when I'm going to come back and have my Blink Dagger up. I got a little too scared though. And uh, you can see I uh, we do win the team fight from it. We get three which is uh, better than the trade they previously just got with us, and we do manage to win that team fight. but again, that was my mistake for still having the magic one and not having sold it for TP scrolls. It's a really bad move, guys, and it almost cost my team uh, like a tier 3 tower. Uh, a tier 2 tower, at the very least, is what they should have got. They didn't manage to get it, because they spent too long sort of waiting around, trying to find if uh, any of us would be stupid enough to run into a hook like I did. Um, but, yeah. So one thing I do want to talk about, guys, is just how tanky Brewmaster is, and how that's not really a role in Dota. I know a lot of people sometimes talk about tanks. It's something that generally, I think, comes from League of Legends. I've been told that, you know, tank is a fairly common um, sort of term there, as well as a fairly common uh, hero type. I've played the tiniest amount of League of Legends, but it's not for me. Um, there is no such thing as a tank in Dota. I am extremely survivable, yes. I have 2.2k HP base, as well as 25% evasion, so add 25% onto that, and 38% physical resistance, so add 38% onto that uh, number as... Uh, no, add 38% to the 2.288 number. So I have an incredibly large H effective HP pool versus physical damage. I also have 25% magical resistance, but that's you know just normal here. Going on this guy, that's maybe a bad choice. I do manage to run outside of the uh, of the stomp then. But Brewmaster is not a tank, and you can see just the amount of burst nuke damage in Dota is so high that there really is no tanks. Even Axe, who is literally a tank, he has a tanking skill, as you might see in World of Warcraft or whatever. But he is so far from a tank. And here, I TP'd up to my friends, and you can see the difference that a TP scroll makes ends up netting us a kill on their carry heroes this is really important kill i thought the witch doctor was going to go down maybe in the fight but i had absolutely perfect timing for using my tp and that gives me the money to finish off my agonim scepter this will basically just make me absolutely ridiculously strong i think it reduces the uh, yeah so scepter uh, increases the duration 
Um, you can see the duration normally caps out at 19 seconds. It will now go for 26 seconds and it will be on cooldown for 120 seconds, which means the effective cooldown of Primal Split is now less than 100 seconds, which means less than two minutes, which is actually very, very fast for um, such a powerful ultimate. It will start to fall out of, off at this point though. It's actually each of the warriors gains the current level of Drunken Brawler. I thought it was just the Fire Spirit, so this is actually a lot stronger than I thought it was. Even the um, the Wind and the Earth Panda get the Drunken Brawler, which means they both have um, crit and dodge chance, which is, you know, and they do a lot of DPS now, so that's very, very strong. I was asking this Witch Doctor for uh, HP and mana. I don't think he, I think he just got the uh, the mana bit first, and then he was like, oh, you want health as well? Oh, I guess you can have some. Because, I mean, like... When I say I want HP, I'm being pretty greedy. Uh, I had more HP than he has when he's maxed out there. And we get ourselves a free kill here, which should be an opportunity for us to go really aggressive. You can see I ping out the top tower. Um, that's probably going to be a fairly easy one for us to get. I'm trying to see if this Huskar thinks I'm going to go on him there and baiting him. He doesn't decide to go for me, but it doesn't matter. I can uh, throw down my Drunken Haze on him, as well as uh, a bit of Thunderclap, and we can immediately go on him. As soon as, they, I, uh, as, soon as I'm back in the fight, I'm going to again throw down the Haze on him, use my Thunderclap on the two most dangerous heroes, slowing down their attack speed, slowing down their damage, and go straight on this guy. Sadly, we don't have Dust, but he's going to almost get picked off by an arrow. I didn't see that in game, but god, that was close. And you can see just how long these freaking uh, spirits last now, because they last a while. You can look at my score now, I'm now 7, 2, and 14, I only have 119 last hits, not a lot, but that's fine, I want my anti-mage to get it all. And I have a huge kill involvement in this game, uh, 21 kill involvement out of 36, that's absolutely ideal for a brewmaster, you're very much based around team fights. Early on you can gank quite well with just a thunderclap, that's all you really need, but um, you know, the later the game goes, you really want to get that multi-hero thunderclap off like I did in that last team fight. Well, well, not a team fight, small skirmish uh, for us, kind of a gank on the uh, the Huskar and the Gyrocopter. I managed to stop, uh, get it on both of them, and that meant that their damage was really reduced. I also managed to get Drunken Haze out on the uh, the Huskar. I should possibly start thinking about using it on the Gyrocopter, but it's whatever. You can see, again, throwing down my slow on that guy. He's ridiculously slow after after that. On uh, If he's got Drunken Haze and my... Um, and thunderclap on him he's really really slowed down and uh, it's very very easy for us to just sort of pick off people who get slowed by both those things so you can see here again i'm out of mana and uh, i'm a little bit worried i don't think we should be taking this fight i could get hit by that though uh, i don't have my ultimate up so i'm gonna have to jump in fairly soon i don't know where the anti-mage is and it turns out he's on the wrong side of the fight we're gonna lose him it's very bad that was a really nice steal from the uh, the rubik here i'm gonna go on to the Elder Titan here. I don't have mana for anything. I'm being focused down and I'm going to very, very quickly die in that fight. So I'm now 7, 3, and 14. Again, still a very, very strong score. Only three deaths in uh, out of 30 for our team. So that's less than a tenth of the deaths. And that's what I should really be aiming for. You can see the rest of my team have uh, a lot more deaths than I do. I don't have a huge number of kills and that's perfectly fine. I'm not looking for a large number of kills on Brewmaster. You're a utility based uh, semi carry, you're not a straight damage dealer, you're not highly maneuverable apart from once you've got your blink dagger and even then you're not maneuverable, you're very survivable so you should be getting the most assists on your team and you should have the highest kill involvement because you're very very survivable and you're likely to stay alive for a long time. The Rubik's actually had a really, really good game this game. You can see he's up to 4, 8, and 19. Ignore the fact that he has 8 deaths because he's a Rubik in a game where there are a lot of high damage uh, heroes on the enemy team who can very, very easily kill him off. And he actually does have a higher kill involvement than me, so well played to him. At this point in the game, you can see the anti-mage, he's picking up his heart relatively soon. Again, his farm is not particularly great. He has 206 last hits, but that's really not enough. And I'm going to be trying to go for a Vlad's here. I pick up the Ring of Regen because I, you know, I didn't have um, any health regen at all. And whilst this sucks, this is plus 2 HP regen, which is basically rubbish, it's better than none. Um, so... That poor Witch Doctor might die to that. <laughs> that was close. 
Either way, we do lose the tier 3 tower from that, and that was basically from a bad fight for us, where I didn't have my Brewmaster ulti up, and I just wasn't able to do anything in the fight anymore. Without my ultimate, I am severely limited compared to how I used to be. So, pick up some extra gold for that ward as well. So I'm going to be picking up a Vladimir's Offering at this point. This is very, very strong, because the, uh, obviously, most survivable hero on the team may as well put aura items on him. Um, this will also give extra damage to my carry, the anti-mage, it will give him lifesteal, it will give him extra armor. These are all really, really strong things. And guys, this I've said this before, I think, but I'll say it again. Do not get a Vlad's on the carry. Get a Vlad's on your utility hero. Get a Vlad's on your mid if you have to. Get a Vlad's on anybody but the person who needs all their item slots and all their gold to win you the game in the end of the game. Because they are not the person who wants to be picking up a shitty 2,000 something 100 gold aura item. Somebody like me who's very very survivable and is now pretty much capped out as far as damage items that I want should absolutely be getting it. I'm not actually carried, capped out for damage items that I want. There are a few things that you can go for on Brewmaster. Things like uh, Assault Cuirass is useful. MKB obviously uh, a very very strong item because of just the way it works with Drunken Brawler and such. You can also go for a Radiance if you so believe. I think I'd pick it up as a sort of troll gesture at the very end of the game to make myself look richer. Um, but, you know, things like that are very, very strong because auras and such and uh, items are applied to your Earth Panda. Although I don't think Radiance will be applied to the Earth Panda once I'm in Primal Split. Uh, I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter too much. But... So here I'm a little bit far forward, I'm a little bit worried, so I'm just going to back off as fast as possible. I do have fairly good move speed, 377. At this stage of the game is, I would guess, fairly average. Pugna's exceedingly fast hero, so I'm slower than him. Gyro, slightly faster. Pudge is fat and slow, um, and faster than him. Elder Titan's pretty damn fast, because, I mean, like, he's 12 foot tall compared to everybody else. And Huskar has haste rune, so that's cheating. Um, and by cheating I mean not really cheating. So I've almost got my Vlads now. Um, I picked up the Basilius as well as the Ring of Regen. I did sell my TP scrolls. This is very dangerous guys. But at this point I think I can rely on my positioning enough. For it to kind of be okay. I still don't want to do this. But I really really want to get this Vlads as fast as possible. And the Basilius will actually add a little bit of damage and, and such to me. It also gives me more armor. So I'm now up to 49% <laughs> on the... Uh, physical damage resistance and you can see just I'm I'm ridiculously survivable at this point shit just don't scratch me man I it's just really really hard to kill at this point in the game and that's very strong for a brewmaster because like I said I'm picking up all items uh, I'm picking up a Vlad's as well as a drum that's sort of the the core items that I really want at this stage of the game and I have you know a fair enough net worth for 40, uh, 41 minutes in. There's no professional game though. Um, my farm isn't really that great. I guess I have 150 CS. That's not so bad considering the anti mage who's supposed to be farming all game has only has 260. Uh, he should probably have more, but it's kind of okay. It doesn't matter. I don't want to bash him because uh, you'll see what happens at the end of this game. But our scores are going to look relatively similar towards the end. But in, uh, in a strange way, you can see he has a lot more kills than me, uh, but a lot lower kill involvement, uh, five less. And that's basically just how a carry here should do it. Oh, that's really unlucky from the Rubik. So here, a weird bad fight for us started in this lane. The Marana's trying to escape up around this area. She's actually going to make it out, if I remember rightly. And I'm just getting ready in position with the Anti-Mage. I really want to initiate for the Anti-Mage if I can do that. We can absolutely win this fight. But first, I want to pick up my Vlads. I had it finished off gold-wise. You see, I'm getting ready and putting myself on the side. I'm waiting till they're all grouped up, and now is the time to go. That's a perfect initiation from me. I jump in. We're going to focus on the gyrocopter. I haven't got my miss chance on anyone, but the anti mage is doing great cleave damage. He's getting my Vlad Zora as well, and we're going to clean up pretty much their entire team. He's now taken out the Pugna, the Elder Titan as well. I managed to get a double kill in the middle of it, and a triple kill now. Elder Titan goes down as well. All of them have gone down, and that's a complete team wipe for us. We lose the Witch Doctor but we win the entire fight from that. Anti-Mage is now going to start on his butterfly, and we're just we're just cruising at this point. That is a perfect initiation. I wait until the enemy is committed, until they're all grouped up, blink in, clap, and then immediately Primal Spirit. If I was a little bit more um, 
If it was a little bit less worried about getting stunned, I would normally use my Drunken Haze on pretty much anybody I can put it on. Uh, generally the carry heroes obviously, but I'd, I would put it on anyone I could get away with. But um, I was a little bit scared about getting stunned, maybe getting hooked by the Pudge, and uh, well not hooked, but um, bitten by the Pudge, or getting stunned, or anything. And I just wanted to get everything off as fast as possible. The Thunderclap really slows down the amount of damage that the Gyrocopter and the Huskar can put out. It really slows them down in the fights as well, and it means they can't run away from our Anti-Mage, which they really want to. Our Anti-Mage is extremely farmed at this point. And from that fight, we take a uh, Tier 3 Tower, and we end up with a shit ton of gold as well. So at this point, I was thinking about maybe a Basher, but my attack speed is still very, very low. A Basher would be strong, just because it would allow me to actually do some damage outside of my ultimate form. But really, at this point, Thunderclap plus Primal Spirit scales so well, because both of them, uh, you know, Thunderclap is percentage-based, and Primal Split will always be good. It does fall off eventually, but it will always be good. And uh, we were thinking about trying to maybe take Roshan at this point, and then the enemy team turns up, which is pretty bad for us. Luckily, only half the enemy team turns up, so actually it's going to be really, really good for us. That poor guy is completely screwed. And you can see the game is really starting to snowball out of control at this point. I'm actually almost level 24, and they're saying fast finish. I still think they can win this game. They can definitely still fight. I do have Primal Split and Thunderclap up though. Well, I always have Thunderclap up because it's on a very short uh, 12 second cooldown. I just realized Drunken Haze is actually continuously up. Uh, it's always on an 8 second cooldown. It only costs 50 mana, so... Take that into account, you can always make sure someone on the enemy team is drunk. I do buy a Basher then, I immediately sell it, and I'm going to try and farm the, some more creeps up here. And I'm going to pick up a Relic. This is going to go into a Radiance, just because I felt like it. I never buy Radiance, because um, you have to buy Radiance early. You shouldn't buy Radiance this late. Don't buy a Radiance this late. If you're doing stupidly well, or if you're playing a carry Brewmaster, I would maybe suggest a really early Radiance, actually. But don't do it like this. Um, I just sort of did it for the fun of it. Um, so again, we're now trying to take the enemy racks. They do try and contest us in the fight. I'm going to immediately just start right-clicking on the Huskar with everybody else, and uh, he does manage to get the Witch Doctor, but Marana takes him out. I'm just going to run in. I'm going to Thunderclap on as many as I can, uh, which turns out to be none, because uh, that was just a bad Thunderclap. I'm going to turn on the Elder Titan here. Again, I'm just trying to send the Wind Panda to do what it can as far as killing other things. I really haven't used the Wind Panda to its fullest extent here because I suck at Micro. That's my only excuse. I, I apologize. I would really, really like to. And normally when I play Brewmaster, I do do... Uh, well, when I used to play Brewmaster a lot more, I haven't played him that much recently, but I should do. Because uh, he's, he's a hero that I do pretty damn well with, and I uh, I really find it fun as well. So pick up my secret relic. Woo! What does this do? Oh, it's plus 60 damage. So everything I told you about auras and picking up team items is uh, is bollocks, apparently. Uh, no, it's not. This was definitely um, just a troll item at this point. The game was over, and we're just going to go on this Elder Titan. And you can see that is a long-ass disable. And it doesn't matter because we can turn around and kick the shit out of that guy. And here we're going to turn around take the second racks. I do get hooked out, but uh, I'm not even bothered. See, I did not use my uh, Drunken Haze at this point. That's bad of me. I picked up my Radiance now. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to kite these creeps around a ton of them miss. Um, and they do no damage to me anyway because I've got like 9 billion armor. <laughs> Throw that out on that guy. If he had his ward down then, I would have died. God, that's embarrassing. Um, so yeah, 11, 3, and 22. The anti-mage ends up on... he's going to get a few more kills. He's going to end up with 22 kills and the same number of assists as I have kills. This is pretty much how to play Brewmaster, guys. Make sure you initiate for your team. Make sure that you team fight really well. And just make sure that you play um, around your, you know, how your team is based. And you can see how... You know, oh, I call myself... I could, you, people would call me a tank. Uh, later the game goes, the much easier it is for the t enemy team to kill me because they gain a lot more damage and there's a lot more things that will deal with the fact that I have uh, good passives and great armor. 
they can get minus armor and such, and their uh, tanks just don't work. But initiators really work. I also buy a gem because I was like, what else does my team need? We need a gem. And uh, anti mage is currently fountain farming because that's definitely not a rude thing to do. Um, as well as that, fuck it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has been helpful. And um, we're gonna wait until the sort of end game screen. But GG to both teams. You see again. 11 4 22 that's pretty much an absolutely perfect score for a brewmaster you know i i mean it's not a perfect score you see my perfect score games hopefully i don't die in them um and i generally do pretty well but 11 4 22 is pretty much exactly what you want as a score for your team that guy was complaining a bit too much but you know thanks for watching guys and goodbye yeah that guy was complaining so I said you know I won mid um, against a gyrocopter who should I think beat brewmaster but either way thanks for watching that's how to play him keep as uh, an initiator and like I said I'm the only uh, English speaker for my team complaining about unable to communicate at this skill level not true so I think I've done my outro nine times now see ya